Welcome back to the woods. Let's talk about bushcraft. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We are back out today at the bushcraft site, but I've got the tarp up because uh, it's a little bit wet and rainy today. Um, tarp's actually really quite low, just how it's had to be. Um, so yeah, but we're back out here. Now what I want to talk about today is bushcraft and you might be like that's pretty much what you talk about all the time. Yes it is. But what I, what I want to talk about today is the different things that you can do that kind of fall under that category of bushcraft in my eyes. Um, from complex things, simple things and all sorts, just the kind of stuff that you can come out into the woods and do. So one of the first things that you can do, one of the simplest things, is to make a drink, make a hot drink. So that's the first thing we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to go ahead and get a coffee on. So, rocking the Archeon 45 bag here today. Um, now, there's lots of different ways that you could go ahead and make a drink. You could use a fire pit, you could use a fire pit there, and uh, do that or you could go ahead and use a gas stove now that's what I'm gonna do today now the reason I'm gonna do that today is actually even though it's raining today it is still incredibly dry at the moment so we need to be careful and having open fires in these conditions is not sensible so we're gonna go ahead and use gas now my stove choice for today has is the Tranja uh, the full Tranja gas kit with gas um, I'm not trying to do this one-handed, it's not easy. Um, so here is the Tranja, comes with a strap, got a lid and or frying pan, got the pot grippers, you've got a kettle, which is what we're going to go ahead and use just now, the gas is in there, and then you've got two pots, and then you've got the body itself. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So, with the Tranja, we take our base piece and our windshield, and they slot together. It should lock, there we go, and lock together. We then take our burner, and we can actually do this first. Take our burner, run the hose through the hole and then out the side here, out the side and then this drops in into there then we get our gas when I can find it, there we go using some jet boil gas today Get our gas make sure when you're using any gas stove um, that it's off before you screw the gas can on the gas can gets screwed on make sure it's tight and there we go and we're ready to go so I'm gonna get the kettle ready we'll pour some water into it first that's job one so Get some water in there. Pop the lid on. Now I actually find it's much easier to light the Tranja without the windshield. So we'll take that off. We'll get a lighter. Don't need to faff about. That goes on. Windshield goes on. Make sure that the transit is level. And the kettle just sits in there. And it's always good to look, remember when you're first using it, remember to figure out which way is which on the gas. So you don't have to necessarily look at the symbols. So then what we're going to do, we're going to find our cup that we've got with us. Go into our food bag, 
and get ourselves whatever it is we're wanting to make to drink. Now for me this morning, oh this bag smells really good. Um, it's going to be a coffee. My go-to coffee in the woods and, and hills and all that in the outdoors is the Nescafe Double Choca Mocha. We can see that there's already steam because this is boiling. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. So you can see how quick the Tranger really is at boiling water. So we're going to pour that in there. Remember to keep your rubbish tidy. Still bubbling away. Just to pour our water into here. And when you forget your spoon, you improvise with, in this case, a bit of root. And you can just go ahead and stir that up. Now this is going to be hot because that water is full on boiling, so we're going to have to leave this a minute to sit. Just stir that up. So there you go. That's one thing you can do when you're in the woods. So there we are. You get yourself a nice coffee. Lovely. You can sit and enjoy the woods around you. It's always something good to do, even if you're out doing something else. Take what you need to make yourself a coffee or a tea or a hot chocolate or whatever floats your boat. Um, there's something so nice about sitting in the woods with a nice hot drink on a rainy day like it is today. So that's one of the things you can do out in the woods. Now, we're going to come back to the Tranja here later on. Um, but we're going to do some other stuff first. One of the other things you can do once you've got yourself a coffee, and it's something that a lot of us love to do, is do some carving and some whittling. Now what the project I'm going to do today is going to be a simple mushroom. Um, now I will leave a link in the description and in the top right hand corner of the screen to a video by Doug Linker. Um, on carving mushrooms, it's a really great video, it's kind of the inspiration for this. So yeah, now what we're going to start with is a piece of green wood preferably, but it can easily be done with uh, dead wood. This is a piece of green beech, it's probably about an inch and a half to two inches thick. Now in Doug's video, he uses a small carving knife. I'm actually going to be using my full TBS boar bushcraft knife. It's what I've got, and you can definitely do it. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial, because I am not the best of carvers. But it is something that I enjoy. So, what we can start with is we've got a couple of knots here. We can just knock them off. Um, remembering people safety when using bladed instruments. I'm going to do a whole video, hopefully at some point, on knife, axe and saw safety and just general tool safety when you're out in the woods here. We're not wearing protective equipment. You, it is recommended for beginner carvers to wear a glove on their off hand. I'm not. Do as I say, not as I do, generally. Um, but it is important to note, um, we need to be aware of what we're doing. And the important thing is if we are out with a group of people, we need to be more careful um, about them than we do ourselves often because um, they might accidentally walk into the way of the blade, etc. So all I've done there is go ahead and take the, uh, the knots off. Now, there's a lot of creative creativity in mushroom carving you know it can be anything now one of the things that I'm predominantly noticing here is we've got this this curve in the piece of wood a gentle curve in the piece of wood so there's options there now I don't have a pencil with me but you can go ahead and do 
and find the center point. Now I could do it with my knife, but I'm not that worried. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of carve the mushroom shape into the top. Now, I'm just doing push cuts here. I'm just taking my time. No need to rush. We're out here in the woods to enjoy ourselves. We've got no agenda. Always be aware of where your hand is so you can see my knuckles and stuff are off the bottom there's not a finger on the top or anything because that would be really dangerous I'm also not working down here and um, if you prefer you can work off to the side I generally it's not something that's recommended but I actually find it perfectly fine to work in the middle yes this is the danger zone but I plant my my forearms or my elbows into my legs and I work up at this height and I'm not pushing off ridiculously. This hand, in fact, isn't doing anything. What you'll see I'm doing is I'm just pushing here with my thumb. So my thumb of my off hand is doing all of the work. And of course, we can bring this into other positions, such as the chest lever. And we can work like that. But this is quite soft wood so I'm not that worried. I can work quite easily from this point. Now the thing with carving, it's very therapeutic that anybody that's ever spent any time whittling or doing anything like this um, knows how therapeutic it is. It's even better when you've got yourself a nice coffee. To go with it and you've got the rain on the top above you it makes it even better but um, it's a very creative activity that doesn't take much creativity I mean you might not understand what I mean by that but basically you don't need to be super creative to create something really creative now I've not actually carved a proper mushroom in a very long time. I've done one in the past before uh, at a, a residential centre uh, back in primary school um, which I think would be the British equivalent of an uh, American elementary school um, and that mushroom, I've still got it somewhere in the house um, it's not the greatest but if you showed someone it they'd probably think it was a mushroom so that's always a good thing. Now one of the things is with mushrooms, like everything in nature, it's not regular, they're random, they're different, they're peculiar. So don't worry about it being symmetrical. If you want to, if you want to make a symmetrical mushroom, go right ahead. But also don't feel like you need to. So all I'm really doing here is I'm working my way round and just kind of shaping the top here into that classic mushroom shape and then we'll go from there. Now it's always good to start with more wood than you're going to need so this mushroom is not going to be this size it will probably be cut off in my case I reckon around about here somewhere um, but having more wood to work with is better. You can always take more off. You cannot add more on. Similar philosophy to the measure twice, cut once. Uh, idea. Start with more. Remove it as you go. Now, getting off topic a little bit for a minute, um, I must say one of the f my favourite things, one of the best things about the woods is when you're out on a day like this, you're under a tarp, so you're dry, but everything else is wet, 
and you just and it's just a good feeling and then sitting listening to the rain just makes everything better now if you don't know here in the UK we've had a bit of a drought recently um, including here in the northeast of Scotland um, which is really peculiar for us um, but it's good to finally have some rain again I still however would not be having a fire um, because the, the, the surface is wet but beneath the surface is still going to be really dry and I can tell that um, even by the the, uh, the soil that's in the fire pit here in front of me is still dry even though this has been out in the rain um, it ha we, had have, we have had some showers recently um, uh, throughout the week and stuff so And even though it's raining today, it's still really quite warm. Um, as you can see, I'm in a t-shirt here. Because um, it's still warm. A lot of people kind of don't know what to do when they're carving. Almost get that blank page syndrome. Um, where they just stare at the piece of wood not knowing what to do with it. Just go. Just start cutting. You know, I, didn't, I don't have a plan for this mushroom yet. Um... When I came out to the woods today, I knew I was going to carve a mushroom because I knew I was going to do it in this video here. Um, but I didn't have a plan as to what I was going to do with the mushroom because I didn't. One, I didn't know what piece of wood I'd find, and two, it's part of the fun. Just letting your creativity flow as you go. Also, folk, um, a lot of people are going to say that carving is really complicated. No, it really isn't. Or it doesn't have to be. Yes, I was talking about Doug Linker earlier. Um, he is a really, really talented carver. Carves awesome projects. Definitely go check him out. Um, there will be links down below, as I say. Um, but at the same time... He admits that he gets, still gets joy out of doing simple things like mushrooms. And that is most definitely the case. Um, and carving doesn't have to be decorative, it can be functional. So if you saw the video two weeks ago out here at the site um, where we dug this fire pit, um, I carved a pot hanger. Now, I didn't actually carve it on video, but I carved it uh, and then showed you. That's still carving and whittling and it's still enjoyable in that case. So you know things can be cut you can do complicated mushrooms are quite simple um they're some of the simplest things to do um you could do it with kids you know um any any age can do it really um but also you can go simpler you could do just tent you could carve a tent peg you could do feather sticks feather sticks are a really good one Um, because you can then also then go on to practice your fire lighting which I guess that leads me on to because I can talk about other things whilst I'm carving here one of the other things you can do out in the woods is practice your fire lighting and um, practice gathering your firewood making feather sticks using a, uh, a fire steel or a flint and steel or a lighter or matches or whatever that's one of the other things that we can do out here now as I've said, I'm not having a fire today and I'm not even going to be uh, doing fire lighting. Um, but I wanted to talk about it. So there we go. That's one of the other things you can do. And you can link things together. So we've already linked the coffee to everything. I'm saying just get out and make a coffee every time you're out. And then, of course, you can use your whittling to make feather sticks to practice your fire lighting. And all of these things all work together. You know, practice putting your tarps and stuff up. That's a really good one to, to learn. Um, we've carved this mushroom shape now. It's the shape I'm going for for this. Um, 
and I'm now just going around the edge, kind of just scalloping an edge because we're going to leave the bark on this. So I'm just giving some texture and pattern to this bark edge. And you don't need fancy tools to do carving. Um, you can carve with a basic mora knife, uh, you can carve with a more expensive standard bushcraft knife like I'm using here, or you can carve with uh, actual carving uh, tools. It really is up to you. Um, I actually prefer to carve with bigger knives because I've got quite big hands um, and it's just easier to carve with for me with a big tool and I find it safer and more likely to cut myself with a smaller tool generally. So there we go, we've got our mushroom shape, that's the shape I'm going for, quite a big one I'm going for. Um, we can finish it off later. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a stop cut around the edge that's going to act as where the stem becomes the mushroom and it's just going to make our lives easier by doing it as a stop cut. And I'm not doing it like a stop cut for um, like uh, a beak notch where I'm going to baton the stop cut um, because I'm just going to slowly work it by just pressing the knife in. Now carving is of course easier with a sharp, a sharp knife um, and my knife is sharp-ish. Certainly sharp enough to do this with, with a bit of green wood and this is carving really nicely. This is beech as I say. Um, your wood type, kind of up to you. I just grabbed what I had uh, available around here, uh, green. And then there happens to be a, a, a beech tree that I can use. Um, it was a bit of a, a dead branch that was uh, that I used, but it still had leaves on it. So it was a recently dead branch. So I'm just going to work around so just press in a stop cut and then cut up to it, press in a stop cut, work up to it. So what's happened there is I've accidentally pulled the bark off this top bit. Um, I pushed a little bit too hard. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to work with it and just implement it into the design and just try not to do it again because if I do accidentally do it again I will probably just have to take all of the bark off to make it and just do it like that but so just be careful uh, don't press don't press too hard Now, if you don't have access to wood, to a natural piece of wood, you can also do this, and a lot of carving projects actually, with dowel. Um, so again, referencing Doug Linker, um, he has done a lot of stuff not that long ago, looking at, um, like this summer, uh, looking at things that you can do with a one inch dowel. Um, so, you know, if you're a kid, and maybe you can't go out to the woods, I'm sure if you ask your parents that they could go ahead and buy you a section of one inch dowel, and you could go ahead and use that. And it, you can still produce stuff that looks as good or better if you spend the time. Um, So that's what we've got currently. There's the bit where the bark's come off. So all I want to do now is just thin this area here 
thin it down to more of our stem. Now I guess one of the things I was going to talk about today or show you through was hammocks and what you can do with hammocks. Um, I have my hammock with me and stuff and I was going to talk about, you know, set your hammock up and chill out in the woods. However, um, I'm not going to set my hammock up in the rain, for starters. Um, so, I reckon we can just talk about it. Um, and I'm not moving the tarp to put it under the tarp. And I'm using this tarp here as a workspace. Um, so that is again another option. And I think this is going to maybe be the recurring theme of this video. That I'm going to end up just talking about all these things that you can do. Um, but yeah, you can take a hammock out. I have uh, my DD uh, travel hammock with me which has the bug net on it, but actually for what we're talking about, a simple you know, parachute hammock with just the material, without the bug net, uh, is really good for this kind of thing of just getting out and sitting out in the woods. And it's a really good way to enjoy nature. And we c I'll leave a link in the description to a video um, by Nick Goldsmith over at Hidden Valley Bushcraft um, talking about forest bathing which um, I will leave his video to describe and talk about but it involves basically sitting in a hammock um, which is always a really good thing um, sadly Nick has stopped producing videos um, because his goal when he started doing the videos was to reach, I can't remember what the goal was, but he's basically, he has completed that goal and he's taking a break from YouTube, which is fine, but it was really good. Uh, I did really enjoy his content. Um, he's still active though on other social medias, on Instagram and stuff, so again, those links will all be in the description. Um, it's quite funny. We've, We've actually got a puddle forming in the uh, in the tarp. Let me show you. We've, uh, yeah, we've got a, got a puddle forming here. Uh, it's dripping off the tarp there. <laughs> Could collect some water if I need it. <laughs> so still still carving away here. Um, although the thumb is starting to get sore, and so I might take a little break here in a minute. In fact, that sounds like a plan. So that's the progress so far. I'm just going to go ahead and put the knife back in the sheath and we'll get a drink. We'll just give the thumb a bit of a rest and we can have a wee chat here. I realise I'm getting close to the edge of shot here. Don't forget the hydrate, people. Really important. Now, I guess what, one of the other things we can talk about, something I talked about last week in last week's video, and it was about observing what's around you. Um, and I talked about having a good pair of binoculars with you. Um, and I referenced some videos and stuff. Um, I try to, as much as possible, carry binoculars on me all the time and I can actually say first hand um, I have witnessed some cool things primarily here on this site um, not the last time I was here but the time before I was sitting on the chopping block that was just there um, and I heard rustling going about and I couldn't figure out what it was and then all of a sudden I was looking that way I can see the trees in question and it was a red squirrel and I could just about make it out but then I I was able to get the binoculars, sit and look at it, and like, and because it, it was relatively close, 
I could really clearly see it um, and watch it, and it was really nice, and it was grounding, and it was, you know, it brings you back in. Um, so that is another thing you can do: is come out and look for wildlife. And the area I'm in, I imagine if I sat quiet enough for long enough, um, which I'm obviously not doing today, because I'm filming, um, I could probably fit, uh, see deer and things like that. Now, yes, there is a road there, but that road's been here long enough now that the animals are going to be fine um, in, a, in and around this area. Um, potentially rabbits. Um, obviously, if we came out at night, we could potentially see badgers, although I haven't seen any uh, signs of any. But, you know, that's another thing, is your wildlife, and you can, you can also come out and look for, um, that's really raining. Uh, just over here behind where the cable and that is, it, it opens up, and uh, there's a bit of a clearing there, and it is really coming down today, um, whereas where I am in here, it's nowhere near as bad, um, unless the wind picks up. But, yeah, you can also come out and do your tree and plant ID, you know, go for a walk and uh, try and identify your trees and your plants, do some foraging, all things that's doable. Now, I did want this video to be a little bit more practical um, in terms of like, all these things I'm mentioning here, I kind of actually wanted to spend a little bit more time at talking about them but the weather's really not permitting um, obviously I've got waterproofs with me and I am in a pretty dense woodland so I'd be alright but I'm not really interested in walking around in this right now um, although I am getting a little bit cold so I think I'm gonna go ahead and put my, uh, my smock back on and just warm up. So there we go that's my smock on um, if you want to know more about the smock, I'll link, leave a link in the description uh, again this week to Forrester Bushcraft, uh, who has uh, is the person who I saw the smock from, um, saw his review, went ahead and bought it. It was really great. Um, not insulative, but it's just an extra layer. I actually didn't bring any insulating layers with me today. I've just got this, the t-shirt I'm wearing, and I have got my, my shell jacket. Um... If you want to see a video on kind of clothing and the, that side of what I use, uh, let me know by leaving a comment um, or, you know, messaging me on uh, Instagram or whatever, let me know. Uh, and that goes for, in fact, anything. If you want to see any content from me, let me know um, and we can go ahead and make that happen. Um, I am trying my best to get a video out every single week. Um, and I'm managing so far and now that I've got this site here that I'm coming to frequently it's good um, tell you what I can do to make my life a bit easier today uh, or I'm cold now this is I'm, I'm chilling down because I stopped doing anything but this is my weather kit by the way I always carry this with me you know, even on a day today like where it's 17, 15 to 17 degrees, um, but I've got some things in here like buffs and stuff, but actually what I'm going to pull out is my hat, um, and you might be saying it's September, it's literally what, the 4th, 4th of September, um, and I'm putting a hat on, there is nothing wrong with that, a hat is a great way, putting a hat on, a great way to keep warm, um, it really keeps the heat in. Um, this is a, a rab hat. This is my go-to hat. It's nice and thin. I've got a thicker one um, that I use, you know, in the winter, or I can use in the winter if I need it. But this is really warm, and I will probably warm up really quickly and then become too warm. But that's fine. Um, so yeah. Um, I think we'll get back to carving. So I don't know how well you can see it, but out there is really wet. In fact, you can't. You should be able to see it. That puddle is getting bigger. 
but it's really nice. I do love this woodland. It's a really lovely bit of woodland. That's coming down. But I'm safe and protected here under my DD 3x3 tarp, my go-to tarp. Great tarp, no issues with it. Big enough for a good few people. You know, I reckon I could fit six folk under this. Um, in this scenario of sitting under it. So yeah. Now I must be honest, I'm really glad I came out when I did. Because um, when I actually came out it was dry, well, it was raining but lightly. And so actually the ground where I'm working is pretty much dry, which I'm really glad about when you compare it to what's out there. Um, if I had arrived an hour later, and it's now half twelve, came out here about 11, just after 11, if I'd come out in the, you know, now, I'd be getting soaked putting the tarp up, but also the ground here would be soaked, so that's nice. Let's get back to carving. Well, we, we've now got that down to a pretty decent width now, about the width that we're probably going to want. So what we can now do is start working it down the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a spot about where my length is going to be. Now I'm going to go for about there, just above this knot here. And we're going to carve the base first. So basically what we're going to do is exactly what we did around this top edge, um, which is our stop cut idea, because now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make use of this knot in the base here, so this stop cut is going to be the top of the base, so the base is going to be this knot, this will be the stem, and then we've got the head. So I'm just going to come around and do this stop cut. Now I do want to say thank you um, for all of the support recently. Um, my latest couple of videos have been doing really well. Um, uh, the video, uh, last week's video, um, is already in like this five, six hundred view mark, which I've only got one other video that's at that point, and that has taken a while to get up to that point. Um, what, what is that other video? I'm trying to think. Oh, it's my my OEX uh, raccoon tent review, or oh, not review, but overview. Um, they're both in there about six, seven hundred. Well, six, five, six, seven hundred mark. Um, the last I checked, um, and that's it. But like. That OEX one has been up for a month now and is at that point and last week's video talking about, you know, you don't need to go and do crazy stuff to do bushcraft, you can just go for a walk to get outside, um, has been up like a week now and is sitting at about the same amount of views, which is really good. Um, I think the thumbnail might have something to do with it. Um, so I'm working on it, um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the day where I check it. Um, the video is uh, one of them, I've got a video that's sitting at over a thousand views, that'll be really exciting. Um, I think we're at 50 subscribers, 4950 subscribers, something like that, so that's also really good. So thank you very much for your support. Um, I'm going to keep doing this anyway because I love it. And I love sharing it with you. But please do interact with the videos. Um, you know, comment, like, and all of those kinds of things. And if you can, watch it all the way through. Um, because that really helps. So what I've done now is we've got our stop cut at the bottom. And I've taken the bark off in the bit in between. So now all we're going to do is go ahead and start working on thinning this out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take another break here from carving and we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook up some lunch. So we're going to use the transit again. Um, 
I've got quite a variety of food today, which is nice. So just careful where your legs are around this. So obviously, um, before we go ahead and even light it, we're going to want to get our frying pan and stuff sorted because we're going to be frying the food. So I don't have any oil at all. We need to be careful here. The other thing, I do not have a spatula or anything to turn it with, so it's going to be a stick, probably. Although some, most of the stuff actually is going to be fine. So, let's have a look at what we've got. We have got two bits of Lorne sausage. So that's some steak sausages. We've got three uh, lamb skewery kebab things. And one chicken lolly from the, uh, which is a sticky maple uh, coated chicken on a stick. These things all came from my work. I work at the butchers. These came from there, um, but it was because they needed to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and cook the lamb first. I reckon. So these are meant to be lamb burgers. Oh, they smell good. Lamb burgers on a stick, basically. All I'm going to do is just, if I can, the stick doesn't, doesn't, the stick doesn't fit, but I can make it fit. That will now fit in there, and of course, because it's got the stick on it, I can actually turn it nice and easily. So, I guess this brings me on to uh, another thing that we can be doing in the woods: cooking. And this is what I was on about earlier when I said we'll come back to the Tranja. Cooking is another thing that we can go ahead and do here in the woods um, that's really quite good. Um, and again, we can do it on a fire, we can do it on a stove. doesn't really matter, but we can. We can go ahead and cook food. And we can cook all sorts of food. Um, you can see today I've just got kind of a selection of random stuff. But we can cook steaks, we can cook bacon, we can cook, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, breakfasts, lunches, dinners, whatever takes your fancy. So there we go, we've got our three lamb skewer things in there. Um, so I'll just get a lighter and we'll just get this going. Legs out, preferably because I've got the frying pan. Place that on there. Not, not too high of a heat. And there we go. Already starting to sizzle. And but we do need to be careful that it doesn't go ahead and stick. Hopefully you can hear that awesome noise. Also, the way to heat your hands up. Because I don't have a plate, I'm just going to have to take it off the heat um, and eat out the frying pan. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Smells great too. Mmm. Oh yeah. 
that's what you need on a day like this here in the woods so that was absolutely amazing now I think I'm going to go for the Lorne sausage or the square sausage next for a couple of reasons um, primarily because um, I don't really want to be putting the chicken in the pan and then putting more meat in the pan but that so this is what we've got uh, square sausage it's just sausage it's what they make sausages with but um, put into a block and then sliced so this is really good still on yeah. so again cook this up and we'll eat it because these have been squashed in a bag they are falling apart a little bit um, especially this one here uh, this one is holding together a little bit better you can see it's falling apart there when I try to move it um, but it's okay it'll still taste fine uh, food in the outdoors doesn't have to be anything special but it does need to fill you up which this is gonna definitely do go ahead and turn that off Mm. Fantastic. Well, that might not have looked great, but I can tell you that it tasted fantastic. So, let's go ahead and do the chicken. Which I'm hoping to be the best. But I've never fried this chicken before. But I'm sure it'll work fine. And onto the heat. So that looks really quite funny and pathetic in there, obviously, but you know, is what it is. This the chicken, this sticky maple chicken tastes fantastic normally, so um, I've got high hopes for this. That's looking fantastic already, and it's only been in for, uh, you know, a minute or two. It's looking really good. I'm not sure how much of the sticky maple still on, because it doesn't smell of sticky maple. Um, but at the very least, it's going to be fried chicken. There we go. I think I'm calling it done there. Um, that looks really, really good there. This looks like a bit of fried chicken. We'll see how it tastes. So there we go, let's give this a try, it's going to be hot, it's very hot. Mm. I still got a bit of that sticky maple. Not much. It's hot. I can't touch it. That's the... Look at that. Too hot to hold. <laughs> Looks like there might be a helicopter. Mm. There is a strong flavour of char. Um, so, I mean, it's good. It's nowhere near as good as it is when we cook them at home. We cook them in the oven, and then they taste fantastic. Then, but just look at that, though. Looks fantastic. Definitely a helicopter. Right? Not sure. What helicopter? I can't see it. There we go. I haven't filmed in a bit. I've been uh, just busy carving away. And we've gone ahead and carved our stem down here. It's not finished. It needs a bit of a smoothing up and a touch up. But that is looking pretty cool. And one of the things we're going to do at the right at the end is cut off a little base there. So it should stand 
um, and that'll be pretty cool so yeah we'll just finish this up here and then uh, probably wrap up the video so there we go I've now done the mushroom I've finished so it's got its little base there it should stand it's got a nice curve in the uh, the stem there uh, and there we go so that is a simple carving project so there we go guys that is gonna wrap up this video I hope you enjoyed it um, as I say if you want to get into bushcraft hopefully there's some suggestions in this video of things to do just to quickly recap of course uh, we look at making a, uh, a hot drink um, some carving and um, cooking some food and I also mentioned some things like put up a hammock putting up a hammock and chilling in it uh, you know practicing with your tarp your knots your fire making etc etc so Definitely be sure to get out there and try some of these things. Maybe go ahead and carve yourself your own little mushroom. Um, these can be, you know, these can be given away as gifts and whatever. If you want to see more information on how to carve mushrooms, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, videos, including including from Doug Linker uh, in the video that I saw that kind of inspired me to go ahead and do this today. Um, and some other videos as well. So that's it for this one guys. I hope you did enjoy. Be sure to go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you're new here please consider subscribing as well. Check out some of these other videos. And until next time. Bye for now.